to the Bob Harden Show. And now here's your host, Bob Harden. Thanks so much for joining us here on the show. It's brought to you in part by Florida Weekly, your complimentary copy available at hundreds of locations throughout the Paradise Coast, as well as the Foundation for Government Accountability. I hope you check them out. Visit the website, thefga.org. Coming up, we're going to visit with uh, Professor Larry Bell from the University of Houston. He's also the author of Scared Witless, The Prophets and Prophets of Climate Doom. Right now we have with us Dr. Zudi Jasser. Dr. Jasser is the founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. He's also a medical doctor in Phoenix, Arizona. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's great to be with you, Bob. Thanks for having me back. Thank you, Doctor. And of course, I've read your book, uh, The Battle for the Soul of Islam. Uh, let's start with that. Why did you write the book? Well, I think ultimately Americans are trying to figure out what's going on, why, not only after 9 11, but now with the Arab awakening. Uh, why has opportunities for democracy turned into the rise of radical Islam, theocratic Islam, and it sort of puts in perspective where Islam is in its time in history, and that ultimately the reason my family became such patriots and and uh, loved this country is it gave them an ability to be free, to uh, be able to practice their faith in a way that they could not in anywhere else in the world, let alone in the Muslim world, where the theocrats dominate, where dictators dominate, and you know, Islam is in that time in history in which we have two major evils that uh, uh, the Muslim people need to defeat. One is theocracy, and the other is secular dictatorship. And my parents escaped Syria in the mid-60s, and Syria has been run by what's been perceived as a secular dictatorship. But uh, ultimately, it also is working very closely with Iran. The Assad regime has been... Um, and very closely tied to Hezbollah and the Khomeinis. So it's not only a secular dictatorship, but working with the world's greatest threat to America and a theocracy. So that battle for the soul of Islam is a global battle, but it's also a personal one where we reinterpret our faith and, and bring it into the 21st century to defeat that mindset in which Sharia law, that in many ways is incompatible with modern thinking, with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, where we begin to hold our leadership accountable, and they don't want us to speak up. They don't want us to defeat these ideas that they're using to dominate a quarter of the world's population right now that are Muslim. Right. In fact, in 2014, uh, I found this in the Clarion Project, bullied for criticizing Hamas by own mosque, and then colon Dr. Zudi Jasser. You were called out uh, in your own mosque with your family present, were you not? Yeah, it was uh, something else, uh, because it was the largest gathering annually at the end of Ramadan. We have our big holiday, and over seven, 800 people are there to partake in the holiday prayers after a month of fasting and reflection and atonement. And we're sitting there, and the sermon was about the same old uh, diatribes about how Muslims need to gather, unify to fight Islamophobia, to fight the bigotry in America. And rather than celebrate patriotism, celebrate the, the greatness of this country, the Imam Yus, uh, Yusuf Ali, um, Yasser Ali, uh, had an attorney in town, uh, basically went off about how uh, propaganda arms, as he called them, at Fox News, etc., uh, conservatives who don't like Americans, that even Muslims don't. Uh, can be anti-Muslim, can be Islamophobic, can be bigots against Muslims. And he said, uh, like the ones that appear on Fox News, like a physician in town who speaks out against uh, um, uh, our community, uh, pr you know, in many ways. And he, he quoted the Quran, and, and the passage refers to people who pretend to be Muslim that are not. Uh. And my, my son, who was 12 at the time, looks over at me and says, I think he's talking about you, Dad. And, you know, it was it's that this is a classic tribal mechanism and that uh, you use a somebody in the community to make an example out of them to, in order to instill fear so that people don't speak up. And you also ruin the, the reputation of that individual by not even addressing the ideas. And I think what was fascinating about that is then when I confronted him on it, I wrote that piece in the Arizona Republic a few weeks later sort of, I had taped it. I taped all the sermons that I go to. Uh, we posted it, exposed what he did, 
And he, for a while, denied that he was talking about me. Oh, my Even goodness. Even though uh, anyone who knows, I mean, this is in Scottsdale, Arizona, where if you talk about a physician who's Muslim on Fox News, they're obviously talking, you know, about me, let alone if you did nationally, most people would know what you're talking about. So it just shows the deception, the dishonesty, and the mechanism of tribal politics where you circle the wagons and you make sure that nobody speaks out and that if they do speak out, they pay a heavy price, even in front of their children and family. So, Doctor, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this today, because I think it just is evidence of the the difficulty of the task of somehow getting through the dialogue around the separation of mosque and state. And here, your own Eman, and I'm probably mispronouncing it, (laughs) but irrespective, the fact of the matter is, why hasn't he embraced your point of view? Why isn't he standing up to support you and to help lead the charge against uh, or for the separation of mosque and state? Well, because even though they may condemn terrorism, even though they they don't like the means of ISIS, they don't like the means of Al-Qaeda, the ends, which is the Islamic State, which is the belief in the supremacy of a society where if Muslims are a majority, they're run by Sharia law, they see that as full. Oh, um, they may find more so-called modern interpretations of that, but they never want to see those ideas wither into the dustbin of history, which is what our reform movement does. Mm -hmm. And when we started our Muslim reform movement that focuses on um, defeat of the ideas of caliphism, the caliphate, defeat of all Islamic states, the separation of mosque and state, the call for the equality of men and women, these same imams started to write on their Facebook in December last year after we came back from our launch saying that, well, there's people claiming to be reformers, but yet they don't even know how to pray, they don't know the Islam, etc. And when we also confronted them on that, they said, oh, no, we're not talking about you. Who who says we're talking about you? I mean, the, the depth of the dishonesty, it was obvious at the time, if you Google, I mean, posted on their Facebook, if you Google Muslim reform, you know, we just had a major press conference. It's obvious that you're talking about our group. Yeah. And yet they don't want anyone to address these things because to them, secular liberalism, Western-type countries are something they exploit now, uh, and they don't mind the freedom. But on the other hand, their goal still, they see this old returning everything to the way exactly as it was at the time of the Prophet Muhammad. And the debate really in our community is, if the Prophet were alive today, would he try to bring everything back the way it was in the 7th century? Or... Would he try to modernize and separate mosque and state and say, you know what, America has proven since 1776 that the best form of government is one very different than the one we had before that, in which there was not a separation of church or or mosque and state. And, Doctor, I mean, uh, so I, I shows that, I mean, uh, you're calling for reform within the uh, Muslim community uh, f- to discuss these issues and to agree upon coming into the 21st century, and yet you have this resistance, uh, and, and I, I, I'm going to p- point out, again, this video is so poignant to me. Uh, you narrated the third jihad, and if our listeners go to... Uh, YouTube, you can find the third jihad narrated by Dr. Zudi Jasser. I think demonstrating uh, the the seriousness, severity of the problem exists right here in the United States. And, you know, we put that video together in 2009 with the Clarion Project. And, you know, it's fascinating how it's still completely germane. Talks about the goal of the Brotherhood, the evangelical Islamist movement that really seeks to um, you know, defeat society within, not from a violent jihad, but with a civilizational jihad, and that's why we call it the third jihad. Talks about the different fronts in this war, be it the prison system, be it the media, be it foreign governments that have helped infuse the Muslim Student Association and the Council on American Islamic Relations. I mean, that Clarion Project, its expert right now is on terrorism is Ryan Morrow, and you can look this week, Ryan has been attacked viciously by care, and they're trying to get him to no longer be an instructor for various uh, uh, police um, organizations. Uh, One was in California. The San Diego chapter has maligned him um, just a few days ago because they don't want him teaching, and he's not anti-Muslim. He's worked with our Muslim reform movement. I'm on their advisory board, and yet uh, all they want to do is say that people who expose the ideas of political Islam and the Islamist groups are somehow Islamophobic. 
And, you know, in our Muslim reform movement, at the top of our masthead, it says ideas don't have rights human beings do. And we see Islam, as much as we love our faith, it's an idea. It doesn't have rights. And they they call people Islamophobes, not bigots, because they want to make sure that the faith itself isn't criticized. Not about Muslim rights, but really Islamophobia, which they, they tie any criticism of Muslims to criticism of the faith. And yeah. thus, ultimately, it's blasphemy laws being invoked in America. Yeah. Dr. Zudi Jassigan, I'm going to encourage you to read uh, the, the Battle for the Soul of Islam, written a couple of years ago, but relevant today. And I, I just genuinely appreciate the transparency, Doctor, that you talk about your own faith, as well as the issues surrounding uh, the separation of mosque and state. Also, you can visit AIFdemocracy.org. That's for the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, AIFdemocracy.org. Doctor, genuinely appreciate your commentary here on the show. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Bob, as always. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, truly a great man, and uh, he's, he's fighting a major battle. And believe me, CARE, these other organizations, you can see, they do not like his commentary and his approach, but he has the right approach to bring Islam into the 21st century. Okay, coming up, we're going to visit with Andrew Jopp, a former professor at Mercy College, uh, also the author of Josepha Savaz. That and more right here on The Bob Harden Show. <laughs> Stay tuned for more of the Bob Harton Show here on the Bob Harton Broadcasting Network.